Well, good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well out there. Just out in the Long Island Sound. Start off throwing this purple chartreuse shad, Elias V 5.5 inch. Got a little bit of strong current today. It's incoming, it's moving towards us right now. Just had a striper kind of bust right over here, so I think what I'm gonna do is start with striped bass and bluefish. Probably just with jigs. And then in about an hour, there's four wrecks I want to check out. Two are in one direction, two are in the other direction. And I think that uh, I'm going to flip the coin as to how hard this tide is moving. And if it's not too bad, I'm going to go to the more difficult, further, more new area to me. And then if not, I'm going to go to a little safer spot. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you See uh, when we start casting. There's a fish. What's this? A fish. Da 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 What's this? A fish? First fish of the day. Feels like a striper. Feels like a striped bass. Hopefully a largemouth. Nice little striper on that purple chartreuse. Here he comes. What's this? A fish? I'm using the purple chartreuse because it's uh the water's pretty dirty. Wow, he's been filling up on the uh on all the little rain bait that's around right now. Later, bud. Look at uh look at how many fish are here. It's crazy. A lot of them around here. Pretty sm seems like they're kind of smaller marks, but you never know. Current is really ripping today. Very fast. There's a fish. Nice fish, too. Another striped bass on that purple chartreuse. This is a nice one. Nice fish. Really nice fish. Beauty. Yeah, see there's a lot of them down there. They're sitting at like 14 feet right now. Water's very warm, like to my, uh, to my fingers. <laughs> yeah. To my fingers, the water's pretty warm. But yeah, they should wake up. You can see the sun starting to creep over that horizon. And, uh, yeah, these stripers seem to have moved off of the beaches. They're in their kind of structural habitats for the summer. They're summer zones. Starting to reset on the drift. I'm gonna switch to a larger profile. This is the seven inch Elias V Shad. And I'm putting a little bit of Menhaden uh, Procure on it. I think it makes a big difference with the striper. They've got a really good sense of, of smell. They can smell, they can smell very well. They're right in front of me. Pretty cool. Boom! On that seven inch. On that seven inch. 
With the purple chartreuse, I was using a three quarter ounce jig head. I just switched to a one ounce. The reason being is the current is ripping pretty hard. I was having trouble doing what I needed to do with the three quarter ounce. But uh, the one ounce seemed to be working. Oh, he just popped off. But I think there's definitely a lot of fish around here. They're boiling right in front of me. So we should have a good chance today of catching some some striped bass at least. And then if, uh, you know, if they decide to get all weird, which they kind of do sometimes, there's another one, uh, then we'll go to those wrecks. Here's one. I'm on top of them right now. I uh, try not to move too much because they really don't care about the kayak. They could care less about the kayak. I used to think that the noise mattered, but it really doesn't. They don't care. Nice fish. Nice striped bass on that seven inch. You can see even the, the kind of smaller schoolies, they'll, they'll still hit this, uh, you know, the larger profiles. And yeah, it kind of, uh, you might also focus in the, the larger fish for you if you're using a larger profile. Bigger bait, man, that water is warm. 71 degrees. Bigger bait, bigger fish. I think it's true. I definitely noticed it with like schools of Menhaden when the bass are on schools of Menhaden that are adult, adult sized Menhaden. They're usually larger because they're, you know, they got those big mouths. I want to go to the top water, but my gut's telling me this is a jig, a jig type situation. And they're taking the jig, so hey, if they're taking the jig. Visual. If they're taking the jig, use the jig, you know? Give them what they want. Wow, this fish is very acrobatic. Going in a lot of different directions. I think they're just starting to wake up. Big guy. Yeah, so you can see the, so you can see the uh, small stripers really aren't, they're not scared to hit these large profiles. You can see he choked that, that's yeah, seven inches. Seven inches of choke. Yeah, so you can see there's a lot of striped bass around. They're pretty small. I'm right on top of them. Might be able to vertically jig it but they really like that snap retrieve, the striped bass. There's something about it. It's like that vibration of the jig head rather than the vertical retrieve, which I think that they're a little less interested in usually, but you never know. Got them vertically jigging too. There's a fish, we just got one. We just got one. And what do you know? Seven inch, uh, seven inch Elias Shad Robin. So when the tide is ripping pretty hard like this, uh, I usually like to throw up more of a, I don't know how to describe it, like a, a sweeping retrieve with it. So like I'll cast it, what would that be? 12, one, two. I would cast at like two o'clock, and then you can see we've got it back at what will be, sorry, I'm really bad at math, 11, uh, 10. So two and 10, I guess, that would be like the clock numbers of how you would want to time your retrieve and your cadence. 
You could get it back straight, that would be fine. But there you go, there's a fish. A little bit up current. Um, will present the bait more naturally. If the current wasn't so harsh, I would probably stage, wow, that guy just really busted. I would probably stage over here uh, and cast a little more directional up current. But yeah, that's just, uh, so yeah, that 10 and two uh, seems to work for me. There's a fish. Maybe it doesn't work for you. Boom, there's a fish. Uh, oh, wow, they keep popping off. There's a fish. Three in a row. That was nuts. I think they're just having a tough time. They're like smaller striper, and they're having a tough time getting that seven inch in. But yeah, that uh, kind of 10 and two when the tide's ripping hard is what works for me. But you never know, sometimes they'll be on the just the bottom of the water column. And the vertical jig might be what they want. You gotta kinda figure out what they're into. My gut was telling me the jig, the jig bite was gonna be the move this morning. And you know, just follow that gut. Oh, rod in the camera. Rod in the camera. Cheese. Look at that guy. That's a beautiful fish. So a lot of these are holdover striped bass. They kind of, they live in the, the sound year round. So I think it's 545 right now. I think I'm gonna go hit up one of the wrecks. These, these are relatively small striped bass it seems like. Not that it's not fun. Oh, there's a fish. But, ooh, ooh, maybe I was wrong. As soon as I said it. Maybe we should just jig around here. Much nicer one. Wow. Yeah, they're just starting to wake up. So I think that, uh, yeah, definitely a lot of these bass around. A lot of these kind of schooly size. A lot of these kind of schooly size around right now nice fish just a little on the smaller side who spiked me just spiked me pretty good but luckily i have my two dollar advanced hand sanitizer spray to go right into that wound <laughs> sorry i'm being a little goofy this morning but wow it actually just sealed it up that was cool All right, here we go, starting to move to deeper water. Wow, it is nasty out here, I might need to go. These are pretty serious rollers. We have arrived at our destination, but our destination is nasty. These conditions are pretty gross. I don't know how long I'm gonna last here. Well, the two wrecks that I wanted to try were a complete bust. And then the boulder I went to is just, it's way too rough. I had to get out of there. So, I'm gonna try some near shore stuff. If that doesn't work out, wait for the slack tide and then get the heck out of here. There's a fish. There we go. It's been like two hours since I've caught a fish. So this is very exciting. 
What type of fish do we have? Maybe a robin? What is it? What do we have? It's a scup! It's a scup! It's a keeper scup. That's a keeper scup. There we go. Nice fish. Whatever this is. Just drop the crab down. Maybe a porgy. On that bottom sweeper jig. It's a nice porgy. Wow. Well, the porgy are always here for you. It's on that on a crab with the bottom sweeper. Damn, it's just getting nasty out here. I gotta I'm just gonna catch some porgy and call it a day. This feels like a tog. Whoa. Is this a tog? Or just a huge porgy, maybe. I just gotta look at it. It looked like a porgy. Oh my gosh, big ass tog. Huge tog. <laughs> I don't know if it's a keeper, but it's a nice one. Definitely worth investigating. Oh, it might be. This might be a keeper, actually. It looks close. Oh, I think it is. I think we just got a keeper tog. All right, let's see. 16, I think, is what togs have to be. Oh, yeah, I think he's way over, actually. He's 17 and a half. Seventeen and a half. That's so sick. I'm pumped right now. Screw the pineapple porgy pizza. We're eating tog. Whoa! That's why you keep them in the net. I'm so pumped up right now, you have no idea. And to anyone from New York, I know a lot of New Yorkers watch this channel, Tog is open in Connecticut. They have three seasons. I know last last time I did like Tog videos in the summer, people got all weird on me. It's Connecticut. I'm fishing in Connecticut, not New York right now. This fish is totally legal. Oh, I'm so pumped right now. bright and early sun's just starting to come up out in the Long Island Sound I'm gonna start off with this 5.5 inch Elias V shad with a three-quarter ounce jig head pretty strong tide water temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit start off trying to catch striper maybe just work this outgoing tide 
let it push us out to some deeper water. And at about 9 a.m., uh, that it'll slack out. We'll take the incoming back. Maybe try for some blackfish for a bit. And uh, yeah, that's all I got so far. I don't know if you can see it, but this is all peanut bunker around me right now. I'm so surprised fish haven't showed up yet. This is so much bait. I'm not used to seeing all of this. The first time I've run into like a big pile of peanuts in the sound this year. Now that the sun's coming up, I'm gonna switch to the white shad in the seven inch. But my gut's kind of telling me I might need to downsize, like retie to something else if this is all peanut bunker, you know? Yeah, there's small schoolies it looks like on uh, peanuts. <laughs> Fish on. Got something decent. <laughs> you seeing this? It's a blitz gone down. Wow, this is sick. <laughs> yeah, it's all peanuts. Let's see if there's any bass underneath them. Oh, yeah, these are all bluefish. Damn. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, wow. I think these are all blues though. Yeah, I don't wanna waste a bunch of money on these guys. Wow, they're pretty much everywhere right now. It might be tough to catch a bass. I'm trying to let my jig be on the bottom. It's usually where the striper will be. Oh, there's a bite. Probably bit off my tail though. Yeah. There's a fish. Probably bit the existing tail. Ooh, this might be a striper. I moved far away from the blues. So it might be a striper. Hopefully it is. Striper? Yeah. Nice. That's what we're here for. I honestly think I had a striper on earlier because I was uh, jigging the bottom. But the blues, I think... Uh... Oh, man, come on. Nice bass. Yeah, a lot of times the bass will be underneath the bluefish. It's kind of what they're doing right now. You see them? They're underneath. It's pretty common for them to do that. Yeah, bluefish bit it off and then he came and grabbed it. 007, my 007 mark. Usually holds fish. I don't really want to forego the jig. Because I've been in this situation a few times where even if you get bit off a bunch, it is worth it to jig because the stripers will oftentimes be underneath these bluefish, picking up the scraps, and uh, they're just a lot less aggressive. So yeah, they're usually mingling underneath. It seems like they're doing right now. There he is. This feels like a bass. Definitely. And those bluefish are pushed out in much deeper water right now. I took a move from, uh, as cool as it is to see those bluefish, you know, on the top and everything. Um, they just destroy lures when they're that small. So Sometimes it does pay off to do the soft plastic, even if you get bit off a few times on some retrieves, just to get down there to the bass.
Yeah, these are kind of small, small stripers. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's a really nice fish. Heck yeah. Super nice. Later, bud. Splashed me. Whole bunch of fish just showed up. Right on time, 6 a.m. They are definitely here. Fish on. Seems like the bass are holding next to the structure and the blues are out in the deep on those peanut bunker. I think the bass are going for porgy. And the, the blues are chasing those peanuts around. Yeah, this is definitely a striper. I think these are mostly going to be schoolies. Totally fine. I enjoy kind of uh, riding the season with the striped bass. You know, you get the really big ones at the beginning. You get these small ones after a while. Nice fish. And uh, yeah, it's, it's fun to just kind of ride the wave and not really pay attention too much to the size. Water temperature is real nice right now. That 72 degrees feels great, I must say. It's like not cold. I wouldn't mind swimming in this. These jellies are just massive. Like that one's like this big. Just got so dead quiet. That's really how it goes with striper though. They roll up, they eat early in the morning. It's 624. I mean, water temperature is 72. They'll hug structure and then they go to deeper water. I think they digest their food. They're cool fish. But yeah, very, very short bite window this time of year. We got uh, some crabs and stuff. Do some jigging with these jigs. Let me eat this cupcake. Seems like the bass are holding to the structure. The blues are slightly off on those peanut bunker. I really want to switch to the crabs, but it's still kind of early. Oh, there's a bite. There's a bite. There's a bite. <laughs> that was funny. There's a fish. There's a fish. <laughs> They're just like toying with it. Bluefish? What is it? Striped bass. Nice one. Nice striper. The most fun fish to catch. Pretty decent size too. This is our nicest one today. This is a nice fish. Fatty. Fat fish. Chewing on those peanuts, I see. Wow, they always splash me. I want to go somewhere else, but why would you go? Every time I go somewhere else, it's fun. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of striper here, so I don't want to go straight to those crabs and just catch a bunch of porgy. The blackfish aren't going to wake up for a little bit. They're like a, a 9 a.m. fish. They sleep at night. <clears throat> there 
there's a fish. Pretty decent one, too. Wow. Glad we stuck with the striper. Because they'll, they'll roll through in waves. One wave will be one size, one wave will be another size, so it definitely pays to stick around if they're feeding. I think that they're feeding on a uh, porgy, like little porgy. There's been a lot of porgy around here. And these bass know, they know what they're doing. Ah, gotcha. Nice fish, really nice fish. But yeah, it seems like a little different size class of uh, stripers just rolled through. These are pretty nice. I held his tail that time so he couldn't splash me. Like gave him a boost. Can hear those bluefish still blitzing behind me. They seems like they moved out to a little deeper water. They're definitely still there. These bass are they're holding tight to structure areas. Nice. Um, I know these boulders very well, like where the placement of them is, and. Um, it's definitely a very dialed in morning like these fish are holding really tight to the the structural boulders and i'm basically pushing the jig past them and they're coming out and grabbing it <clears throat> but yeah I'd much rather catch schoolies than uh go through you know fifty dollars worth of tackle trying to catch those those blues you know Nice fish. That's the, the secret right there to not getting splashed. As they turn, you kind of guard their tail and their tail hits your hand. That's the way to do it. I always learn something new out here in these, these streets. Yeah, it's definitely a spot that if you don't know where these boulders are, you're gonna get hung up or uh, you're just not gonna catch anything. They're very, very particular. And I've got them all marked out. There's a fish. Wow. Blue just destroyed it. That was awesome. Oh no, striper, striper. Striper went nuts. That was so sick. <laughs> that was awesome. Dude, you get the highlight reel right there, buddy. That was some highlight reel material. That was sick. It's just a really aggressive striper. Dude. You the man. Look how broken his stripes are. He's a, a broken soul. Nice. Yeah, that, that tail push. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Ooh, there he is. I'm basically just resetting my drift and putting it right in front of this one boulder. I know they like to hang out in front of, on this tide. They're just popping out every time, grabbing it. It must just be sitting in front of it or behind it. There isn't really a ton of tide. Tide just slowed down. But yeah, it's like right over here. I'm kind of just getting my jig straight over the side of it. Can feel it myself bumping into it at times. This is a six inch Ron Z, and so basically what I've been doing is just tipping the hook with a, just a little bit of a sandworm coming just out the shank and, uh, I mean the barb, and yeah, just doing that. 
It's been working really well. Love catching porgy on the Ron Z. It's just fun. This guy's too small though. Way too small. Yeah, it's a really fun little setup. Uh, I've been doing that that same setup with um, epoxy jigs. It's been working really well. Just kind of tipping the uh, the hook of the epoxy jig, the little sandworm. Nice. This is a good catch. Wow. Look at all that plastic. That's a good catch. So the number one thing that I find in the sound is balloons. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, the porgies. Well, we got about an hour and a half of uh, outgoing tide. I think I'm going to go explore a new spot. Why not? There's just a bunch of porgies here. Yeah. See, it's always the balloons. I can't take this board. It's a little too big, but it's always the balloons. Think if people stop releasing balloons, everything will be better. There we go. Oh, whoa! Oh, oh, oh. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a bunch of rain bait in front of me. That was a striper that just bit it, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they're on rain bait, I guess. We have reached our next destination, by the way. Yeah, you can see it. It's all rain bait. Basically, when you see them pushing it around like that, you try and get underneath it. Seems like it's bass. They're starting to corral this up. There we go. Fish on. Bluefish. Blues. Blues harassing rain bait. Whoa, bud. These fish are so crazy. They'll do anything. Whoa. Got a lot of tail power. Especially when they're this size. I'm actually going to grip this one. Just make this easier. If it'll let me. There we go. So just be an easier release. Well, nice fish though. Later, bud. Switch up to Mr. Krabs. I'm gonna try going pretty light with the jig to start. Finally got to some, what looks like decent structure in a new area. Got him. This is a fluke. Nice. Stay on. Pretty sure it's a fluke, right? Am I crazy? Can I just not see? Oh, nice. This is what we came here for. Sick. This is why I came out here. For the sea bass. Little one, but it's a start. Always the balloon. Whoa, that one had confetti in it. What the freak, man? There he is. That's what we're looking for. Oh my gosh. Come on, stay on. Get him out of the structure, B.O.B. Got him. Looks like a keeper. 
heck yeah. Got him. Yes. Wow, what a fight. Tell you what, that was right over where the balloon was. It's crazy. Whoa! It is basically 15 inches. Well, that was a nice tog. Not a keeper, but that's okay. We got a bluefish. It's a great fight, though. They fight so hard when they get big. I want this slam so bad. Tempting to keep a couple of these guys. Nah. Small tog. There he is. Tog or porgy? Wow, very big porgy. Wow, impressive porgy. Look at this thing, oh my gosh. World record. Look at that thing, it's massive. Well, it's about 11.15, I'm exhausted. I've been out fishing since at least five. So yeah, I'm gonna call it a day. Grill up that porgy and bluefish on the grill, like a grill, and then eat that with my grill. And it's a great day. You know, we didn't get that slam with the fluke, but it's a great day. Beautiful weather. Caught a bunch of fish. Thanks for joining me. See you on the next one.